and welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick with the City of Hampton. And today we are gonna talk about Start Peninsula. My guest is Tim Ryan. Welcome, Tim. Thank you, thank you for having me. This is um, a really cool thing that people don't entirely understand, including me. <laughs> so <laughs> let's talk about what Start Peninsula is and, and why it's around. Well, it's, it is very, it's very, very exciting. So much like Shark Tank, everyone has seen the television shows on TV for the last several year. It's really a local flavor of Shark Tank. We have a, a series of people that pitch their business idea. We have a panel of judges, just like on uh, Shark Tank. We don't have Mark Cuban or Mr. Wonderful or anything like that, but we have a, uh, a panel of seasoned judges, and we, have, we feature 30 people, and they can pitch their business idea. Wow. Yeah. That's a, that's a scary big thing, but it I is. think there are a lot of people out there with ideas. And, and that's what's so fun about this event. I mean, the number of ideas that people have and the, the types of problems that people are trying to solve, that it's really, really exciting and interesting to see what people come up with. So what do they get if they win? Obviously, Mark Cuban isn't going to invest, you know, a million in their business. What they get, really, first and foremost, we view Star Peninsula as we are the platform where people can validate their idea. What we find more times than not, unfortunately, is people will put their life savings into a business idea only to find out that nobody is willing to pay for their service or nobody wants to buy the product that they are trying to sell. So they're able to validate their idea uh, with the panel of judges. They get instant feedback in terms of, yes, you're onto something. This is something you need to continue moving forward. But if you are one of the fortunate ones, uh, we narrow it to, uh, from 30 down to 10. And then those 10 people will be able to pitch their, repitch their idea Sunday night. And that gives them the validation that they need. Um, if they're even luckier and if they advance to the top three, then they, have, they get a little prize money. This year, each uh, of the top three winners will get $5,000. There's mentorship that they receive throughout the course of the weekend. Um, and you're really put into the pipeline. You meet so many people uh, along the way, and you're off to the races, and you can continue with your, uh, your business journey once the weekend is over with. So, so much of it is about helping them refine the idea and figure out what to do next, That's right. really. Which I think a lot of people who are inventive have that invention, but don't necessarily have the business and marketing skills or manufacturing contacts to, to really get it going. It is, I mean, it's really, it's, it's, it's a challenge. I mean, so many people are so close to their idea and, and really it's, it's, it's their baby, if you will. And it's tough. It's tough to get in front of an audience of a couple hundred people with judges pitching and put, really putting yourself out there. You're very vulnerable in the sense of someone may tell you that your idea is not worth pursuing. So even before Star Peninsula takes place, we have a series of classes where we will teach people how to pitch that idea. Because on Friday night, you have 90 seconds. Uh, you don't have any props that you can use. You don't have any PowerPoint slides to fall back on. Mm -hmm. It's you looking at a panel of judges and the audience with really? a microphone in your hand. And when you're 90 it's seconds- It's like a TED talk. Well, really short. <laughs> right. And when you're 90 seconds is done, if you didn't portray your idea the right way, then you may not make it through to the next round. And that's the way it's been in the past. But this year, you're kind of coaching people to get to that point. Uh, yeah, and we, uh, the big thing for us is, is again, that the idea validation. Let, them, let people know that what you're doing is worth pursuing and continue with that idea. Um, a lot of people have been told no, and it's just a matter of maybe you just, it's a quick pivot that you need to make. Mm -hmm. Focus on a different target market, whatever it is that you need. But we, there's so many different ideas, and entrepreneurship is such a prevalent thing in this area that it's great that the localities are able to put forth the resources and make a program like this possible for the aspiring entrepreneurs in our area. Okay, so two things I want to follow up yes. there is the local, uh, who's paying for this? You, you were mentioning it, but I want to talk about it a little deeper. Okay, uh, it's great. All the localities on the peninsula, uh, they pay a portion, per, a per capita, amount based on the population in their, of their locality, and that gives us some seed money so that we can put on an event like this. 
that helps pay for the, the prize money, the venue. Um, that's, that, that's what it takes to make something like that possible. And I do think it's, this is one venture, it's not the only venture, mm -hmm. where you're seeing the, you know, historically, economic development in all of the cities has been a competition mm -hmm. and um, luring from one to the other and everybody needs a tax base and there's lots of reasons for it. But, but in this era of startups and new business, we're seeing a lot more cooperation. Correct. And I think that um, people need to know that because the governments have been criticized for you know being out against each other instead of drawing people right. to the region as a whole. And it's, it's one of those things, that it's very interesting that so many, with, with such a transient population, so many people, they have no idea where they even are at any mm -hmm. given time. So mm -hmm. they may live in one area and work in another area and we're bringing in people as a destination from all different areas. So everyone really wins and it's, it's great to see the progress that has been made from a regionalism standpoint. Okay, and then the other thing you said is there are so many entrepreneurs here. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that a little bit. Sure. What makes the Hampton Roads region or the peninsula side of the things such a such an entrepreneur startup kind of environment. That's a it's a great question, and I guess to, to further my point, uh, taking a step back, the Kaufman Foundation they're known to be the the leaders of entrepreneurships and studies across the United States. And what a lot of people don't realize is that we're number thirty three in the nation for startup activity and entrepreneurship, which is really amazing from a metropolitan statistical area standpoint. So that that's all are, of Hampton Roads. That's that all MSA. of Hampton okay. Roads. But it's, we have so many different universities. We have the military that is here. We have uh, so many Fortune 500 type companies that are here. And the amount of deal flow and people that may get tired of the standard nine to five, they will start their own company. But mm -hmm. we really have the, the foundation to really build a, a, a strong entrepreneurship base here. I do think a lot of it is the military, that people acquire skills, they're not usually in a traditional nine to five office job, mm -hmm. they're doing things, and they retire early enough right. that they can do that second career, and they may want to do it by themselves this time, right. as opposed to you know someone else's uh, direction. That's right, that's right. <laughs> Tell us about your background, since we're talking about the well, military a little bit. Like, we, like you just mentioned, I was in the Air Force. The Air Force brought me here 18 years ago. Uh, we loved the area and we decided to stay. I was a defense consultant for a while, uh, went to school at William & Mary, finished my MBA, and I decided that I wanted to stay here and start my business. So I've been working with early stage startups and entrepreneurs for the last six years with my company. And your company is? My company is called ARC4 and we're located in Yorktown. Okay. So um, this year for Start Peninsula, you guys have lured in a really dynamic speaker. Tell us what that's going to be about. We did. It's beyond exciting how <laughs> that we even have the opportunity to do this. Uh, we are bringing in uh, Jason Calacanis uh, as our keynote speaker. We've talked for so many years about bringing in a, a dynamic speaker, and uh, this was just an opportunity. I, I met Jason on Twitter, of all places, and asked him the question about, hey, would you love to come to Virginia and, uh, and, and speak at one of our startup events? And long story short, uh, he said yes. Uh, so he only does four of these talks a year oh, in wow. the United States. So we, I really had to go through a process to sell our area to, to him, and he decided that this would be one of the four areas that he would like to focus. and. Um, do a talk this year, so it's really, really exciting. Now, for people out there who aren't as familiar with his mm -hmm. name, tell us a little bit about uh, Jason Calacanis, he is a, an angel investor, and he's very, very specific in the sense of he's an angel investor, meaning that it's very early, early stage. Um, so even before someone like a Mark Cuban or anybody on Shark Tank decides to put their money in, he is one to take the most risks. So the, he has been, he has invested in uh, six different companies that have achieved a billion dollars in revenue or more uh, in terms of valuation. Wow. And one of the most notable was Uber. He was the third person to invest in Uber. Uh, he, he invested $25,000 into the company when it was a $4 million valuation. And today it's 70 or 80 billion, depending on what 
you read. So if you do the math, then you know that that turned into a lot of money really, really quick. So, but you know, when you do that, you're taking a lot of risk. And so the six giant payoffs, sure. there were probably um, a lot that didn't quite make it. That's and right. That's the startup world. And, and, and that's what's so exciting about him coming to, to join us for Startup Peninsula is that he's, uh, he released a book, it's called Angel, How to Invest in Tech Startups and How He Turned $100,000 into $100 million. And oh, it's, it's his playbook of what he looks for as an investor, so if you are an entrepreneur, you can reverse engineer what he's looking for so you know how to build your business in a way that's appetizing for investors, but also from an investor standpoint, which this area, there is a lot of money and there is a lot of investment in this area. It's a great, a great guideline and, and the investors around this area can hear it from the most successful investor to, to be more successful. Now, you're telling me there are a lot of investors. Mm -hmm. I've heard some criticism that there isn't that sort of angel network here in Hampton sure. Roads that exists in. We don't have as many Fortune 500, we don't have as many mm -hmm. companies headquartered here. Some people are suggesting that we need people to step up to the plate <laughs> to do this. The, and the reason I laugh is because any business, any business that has, is solving the right problem and that is an investable business, there is more than enough money in this area to find investment. And the, the cold hard truth is, a lot of people that are talking about the fact that there's not money here is people oh. that may not have the right business, but I mean, there's an organization locally called 757 Angels, mm -hmm. and that's made up of over 100 investors just in this area. And then we have Richmond that uh, it has a very mature investor network. Uh, but things have really matured a lot in the last seven years since we've been uh, working on Star Peninsula. Great, and Star Peninsula isn't, um to attract the funding. It's more about the mentoring and refining of your goals, but some of these potential investors might be there, might decide on That's their right. own to, um, to invest. That's right, we, we typically will have early stage type investors that are in the audience. And that's one of the things that we tell the companies is that you may not win, but there's investors that may want to invest in you. And not to mention back to Jason Calacanis, when he's here, he invests in 150 different companies a year. And when he's here, he will be looking at companies and he's not ruled out that he would be willing to write a couple checks or uh, invite wow. a company or two to his incubator in, in Silicon Valley. Wow. Yeah, it's a huge, huge opportunity. Very, very exciting. All right, so tell us mm -hmm. um, dates, or we can put them up on the screen, but just sure. give people an idea of, of when this is. So to Star Peninsula this year will be November 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. It'll be that Friday night this year, uh, it's in Newport News at the Applied Research Center next to Tech Center. And the way the Star Peninsula has worked is we always rotate around. Uh, one right. year it's in Hampton, another year is in Newport News, and then up in the greater Williamsburg area. So this will be the third time we're in Newport News. But November 2nd, 3rd, and 4th this year. And can anyone go? Like, you know, can. someone like I could go. I'm not going to pitch. Got no ideas. But this is kind of fun and exciting. It is. Anybody can go. Uh, tickets to attend the event are, are on our website, startpeninsula.com. And a lot of people that they just want to go just to, to witness the pitches. It's really, really exciting. And just some people always have those entrepreneurial aspirations. They want to kind of dip their toe in the water exactly. a little bit. And, and think about what, coming back. That's right. Think about moving their idea forward. That's right. Okay. Well, that sounds exciting. Is there anything you want to add before we close? Well, I, one thing that we, we focus so much that Star Peninsula is the, a weekend type of event, but I really encourage everybody to connect with us on our website. We're putting a, a big effort to make sure that it's a year-round set of activities. So we teach people how to pitch leading up to the event. We have our big event. Um, we're, we've partnered with Thomas Nelson this year. We're getting ready to kick off a, a, a series called uh, the Entrepreneur Mindset, Startup Mindset. And that's an eight-week session that, uh, that brings people together just to get people in, the, uh, in the, the cycle, in the mindset that they need to, to go through the, uh, the marathon of entrepreneurship. Well, I think that's important. And I talked to ooh, I might get, the Hubbards mm -hmm. who, who participated and won one year. And right. he's like, I had no idea what I was doing. Like, I knew my product, but in terms of refining my pitch and knowing what to say, he said, I walked in there cold, and right. he said, I don't recommend that people do that. So right. I think, you know, what you're doing this year 
is broadening out that education, working with people right. um, year round is important. And it's further collaboration across the area. So as I mentioned, uh, 757 Angels, there's also 757 Accelerate, which is an accelerator uh, focused on the area. But we can move people through the pipeline so that as and provide them with more education so that their business gets more investable if they're looking to raise money or provide them with the marketing or the, the name recognition. So we're, we've really matured a lot in the last several years. And I think sometimes it is refining that idea mm -hmm. that, because it might be a great idea, but right. it's missing the market by this much. Right. And finding someone who can mentor, who can help do the research or point you in the right direction. That's right. Can mean something that's gonna succeed in, instead of not succeeding. So many people are so knowledgeable at the things that they are focused on, mm -hmm. but in terms of breaking it down in a way that people can really understand, it's, it's, it's very difficult. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Well, I appreciate you, you coming by. Absolutely. Thank you. And thank you for watching. I hope if you have an idea in the back of your head and the um, germ to start thinking about your own business, you will come to this. And even if you don't, um, just listening to the keynote speaker and, and watching the other ideas would be um, an absolutely fun, entertaining, and enlightening event. Thanks for watching.